Greetings everyone and welcome to City Skylines and my coverage of the latest DLC Green Cities. Now I was afforded this opportunity thanks to Paradox and Colossal Order and I am incredibly, incredibly fortunate to be able to check this out ahead of its release on the 19th of October. Now, those of you who've been with the channel for quite some time may remember my initial City Skylines coverage back when the game had first come out, and quite a few of you are eager to see a return. So I'm very, very glad to be able to bring this series to the channel. Now, just a, a, a forward before we get down to what Green Cities is and what it offers. I have played a couple of the DLC. I have been keeping up with the game here and there, but there's quite a few DLC items here which I brought just ahead of uh, this series. So I, I fleshed out the DLC library. As a result, there's going to be quite a few things that I'm going to be encountering for the first time. So uh, yeah, forewarned is forearmed. There's going to be shenanigans. Hopefully though, they'll be the derpy, endearing kind of shenanigans and not the eye gougy hair pulling shenanigans. I do like to think that I'm fairly good at these sort of games. So hopefully the really frustrating sort of mistakes will be kept to a bare minimum but with that said let's actually jump into a new game now green cities dlc as one might imagine from the name is very focused on um renewable energy on on green living in general so we've got like things like uh, electric cars um self-sustaining colonies or rather districts which can be told to pursue a much more self-sufficient um way of of life so you know they handle their own recycling that sort of thing and um, their own power even with, with solar panels and so on and so forth there is a slew of new game assets added by this dlc some 350 odd somewhere around there now since we are checking out the green cities dlc in particular i think it makes a lot of sense for us to go with one of the green cities uh, new maps that have been added so we've got eden valley um garden rivers and lavender lake each one of them in a different kind of uh, base theme. So this is Boreal. Down here we have Temperate and Tropical. I think we will probably go with a, a nice middle ground Temperate for this one. Now I will be having left hand traffic turned on as with the uh, the initial series simply because I'm British and it'll, it'll help my brain handle the logistics of the road layout if everything seems to be driving on the right side to start with or rather the left side as the case may be. Now as for the city's name, hmm, I think we're going to go with with a uh, a bit of a default one. We're going to go with Avakin, the city of Avakis, uh, the, the 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 capital city of Avakis. And with that, we're going to get uh, down to playing. So I will see you when the map has finished generating. And here we are in the uh, birthplace of the future metropolis, Avakin. Uh, hello, let's start by building some roads. Right, okay, first thing you should do is pause the game. At the very beginning, even if you tend not to like pausing or using pause as a crutch, do pause the game when you're laying out your city to, at the very beginning because you have no residence and no tax income, but you are still going to be paying maintenance on any roads or power lines or pipes that you laid down. So uh, just do yourself a favor and just have uh, the first um, couple of minutes just to lay out the, a basic idea of uh, at least the road network and get get things slotted in and, and zoned before you do anything else now um as you may notice there are a couple of things here i've given uh, uh chirper a, a new hat one of the new hats that came along with the green cities dlc and we also have a radio station which is going to be brand new to uh many people who are checking out uh city skylines since my first uh series on it and in fact there are a couple of radio stations here one of them I have been warned not safe to have on a recording or a stream and that is Gold FM because there are li uh, some licensed music there but uh, I had noticed there was a classical channel oh my lord yes please that's going to be absolutely beautiful right nothing like a little bit of classical to uh, chill out to while you're building a city right you can go away chirper and uh, generally you're probably going to annoy me more than anything but I'll leave you there until you annoy me terribly 
Now, anyone new to City Skylines, um, the way the features are unlocked in this game is perhaps a little bit different to uh, what you might be used to. Uh, we have something called milestones. Let me just adjust my mic slightly. It looks like it was a little bit low down there. And at each milestone, you unlock new buildings, new services, new um, parts of the game. For example, we'd be able to take out a second loan there. We would be able to specialize certain things, self-sufficient buildings, so on and so forth. There's lots of new things that will become available. We can't even landscape until we're a tiny town with a population of 1,400. Certain things are gated behind you having made progress in the game. But additionally, some things are just gated to you doing something. For example, it's going to want me to lay a road. Now, how you enter and exit your, your city is um, actually a little bit of a point of contention. Everyone seems to, to think there is a certain best way of doing it, and not all of them seem to agree, as is often going to be the case. Now, as for me, until you get a couple of the different types of roads, um, you are very, very limited. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay down a, a bit of road, and that is going to give us access to at least um the one-way streets we can have one way six uh large road and a one-way uh regular road now the the thing here is to bear in mind that at the very beginning you're not going to have much tax uh income and so i would recommend going with the cheaper of pretty much everything anything that takes less overall maintenance and in fact less to build as much as the six lane road would be good to have for the main entrance to the city especially coming off a highway uh, it does cost a lot more twice as much to place and uh, a fair bit more in in upkeep per week three times as much upkeep in fact so we're going to be sticking with this but now that we have that available i can just go ahead and upgrade this into a one-way road now generally speaking i like to use um roundabouts to to allow um entrance to my city to be nice and smooth and as few like traffic like junctions as possible now it used to be a case where you'd have to do some finagling to avoid that but i'm understand that uh, that's a little bit different in the base game now um you don't even have to mod it in anymore oh how city skylines has developed in my absence uh makes me so proud but uh right the way we're going to do this is we're going to have a, a little roundabout that hopefully we can um upgrade later on but we'll start off with just a, a little something along the lines of this i would say there we go and then back it'll it'll be well it won't be it's it's round it's just not circular okay it's called a roundabout not a circular about so i'm perfectly okay to do this right now someone isn't gonna accidentally enter your city unless you've done something truly like crazy voodoo magic with your with your massive intersection on the highway they're not going to just enter your city and immediately want to turn around and leave so having the the traffic flow in this direction makes a lot of sense to me and from there we can actually start branching out now the thing with this is generally speaking i'm not actually going to want my um city to have a lot of traffic running on this roundabout this is really only for the entrance and exit uh as far as i'm concerned so what we're going to do is we're going to let's just measure out a little bit so over here actually let me go to the road that i want i want a bit of a, a stronger road a, a higher capacity road just for moving um uh traffic around inside the city so this is going to be the main road am i still on curved roads yes i am that's why it looked a little bit dodgy uh let me uh just start that again there we go there we are now this is going to be the main road running through the city we'll leave a little bit of, of space there but we'll attach to that road via um off and on ramps onto the onto the uh roundabout in a sense uh there we go now now that we've built the road, I believe our overlay should allow us to check water. There we go. Because that's now something that our, our citizens are going to care about. Generally speaking, if you haven't unlocked the ability to place a building uh, or, or deal with a certain resource, for example, garbage, then your citizens are not going to care about it until you can, which is a small mercy that the, ga the game uh, pays us. But now we can see the direction and flow of the water down this river, which is going to allow us to decide where to put certain buildings. Because there are certain buildings where, you, well, you don't want to have your intake water 
downstream from your outflow otherwise the people will be consuming the results of what they last consumed and that is just that's not going to be good no that that leads to bad things uh generally health bad things as you might imagine uh right so um actually i think i would i i would like this to, to still be a little bit more one way uh well, let's turn that overlay off there uh just so there's a one way entrance onto it and one way exit from it this way this way the the flow should be uh, well that being said there is an, isn't actually much use in it being a roundabout if if these aren't two way because anyone who wants to leave will just go that way and so you wouldn't ever make use of this section no okay well i'll to to give this roundabout purpose i will leave this be two way right uh we will have i'm thinking we'll have given that this looks like it's going to be ore. We can't check that yet because it's going to be a little while before I can actually look at the kind of specializations of industry that would use minerals and farming. But this is definitely arable land over there, but I think this is ore. It makes sense then to have industry on this side, I think. So let's uh, build with that in mind. Actually, I'm not as fond of this classical, so let's go back to the uh, regular city skylines. That, that was a little bit too... Um, too jazzy for me for now uh right now you don't have to and i often won't go just for straight roads but i will build a straight road out there just so that i can have the marker tell me what 45 degrees is there we go perfect and up here i think we're just actually going to straight up connect to that road straight from there um we could actually continue on through if we really wanted to i suppose that isn't terribly bad generally speaking you want to try and avoid having too um frequent intersections um uh, at least on the on the larger roads especially because they often result in traffic lights now i believe that we actually now have a means of dealing with that in a much more direct way it used to be that you could mod um with certain mods you could uh, expressly choose what would have a traffic light and what would not but i believe we now actually now have a little bit more control over that than we than we used to i'm actually quite excited to see that now another thing that we're going to be doing here is generally speaking i want to try and keep the um the city fairly compact so that i'm not having to spend a lot in infrastructure just moving things around like water or, or power um but that being said uh, i do want to have a reasonable uh industry down here now until we unlock the ability to terraform and uh landscape we're not actually going to be able to see contours at least i don't think can we see on the height on the wind map oh wow ah right okay well uh just for for reference this is strong wind and i guess that makes sense because there's a mountain or also strong wind near the uh the the shores and the banks of that rather large river over there these will be the best places to put wind turbines and since we're playing on on green cities it makes sense for us to try and at least be somewhat green uh i think we will actually have a bit of a curve here let's uh start bring this uh, actually no let's uh bring that out to here and then just just up like so something like this i think would be quite nice and then we can yeah somewhere about there and we can have a, a straighter road going up there and we can continue on the development of our industry uh flowing up uh, up along here uh we will use this to actually mm, yeah, we'll, we'll bring it in a little bit because I don't want to waste too much space there. But we can probably just bring this... Oh, that 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 alignment is fantastically useful. I approve enormously of this. This is a very, very big uh, enhancement in my my opinion. I uh, want to try and make this curve a little less severe, though. Now we've got... Let me turn off grid snapping. Is it? Can I actually turn off the snapping? Can I hold down control or shift? Mm, okay. Well, what we can do is something like this. So we've got two from there. Let's do the same over on this side. Now, what I'm doing with this is because I want the curve to be very, very narrow. We'll just delete that rather than the whole section. Because normally you'll delete a massive section of road when, when you delete. But uh, this actually allows you to get slightly more gentle curves in a in a much smaller area there we are so that is a, a bit of a nicer 
nicer line up there. We'll have a little connection over here as well. We can uh, build off this road some more industry as time goes on. Okay, now for the residential area. Now, um, well, first and foremost, we are going to want to connect up here. Can I have a, a bit of a better curve? Uh, it doesn't look like not easily. Okay, well, we'll bring that out again and go for another 45 degree angle. That'll do. Can we bring that all the way down? Yes, we can. Perfect. Uh, I'll actually continue this on out a little bit because that looks ridiculous. But there we are. I'm actually a little bit aware of the amount of money that I'm spending on just building roads. But you often will spend quite a lot early on. Now, for my residential, uh, I would like... We'll probably keep it fairly compact, but one thing I am aware of here is that I would like to have my um, services towards the middle. Even if I have my industry out on the edges and my residential out on the edges, I would generally like my services to be in a position where it can easily serve uh, either way. Uh, sure, actually, we'll, we'll pop that one there and we'll have a bit of a curve going on here. Uh, all the way up there. There we are. That's uh, actually quite nice. That into that uh, junction there, eh, not my greatest work, but I think I'm going to be able to live with it. Uh, let's bring this out down to there, and we'll also run this along there. And this will form part of our, our residential area down here. Uh, we'll bring that out a little bit further. And now, generally speaking, the reason why you can only see four grids here, this is the, the zone. This is where buildings will build along the side of the road. Not all roads can have zoning. For example, highways can't directly have zoning on them. Uh, however, along here, you'll notice there's four there. There are always four because it's four from the road is where they'll build. Now, if I build, were to build this out just a tiny bit further and then build it across, I can have a much more densely packed area here. And that might actually be quite fun. Though, for now... Um, yeah, actually, we will do that. We'll have that little area in there, a bit of a larger block. We can also have some residential down there. Uh, we'll also we'll extend this road just a little bit further out to there, and then we'll have this connect up there. That way, we're we're limiting the amount of uh, intersections we're going to have, but we are we are giving a little bit of, of room to grow, as it were. And we'll bring this up to around here. There we go. That that'll be our initial residential. We'll probably uh, change it up a little bit, make it look a little bit more snazzy with time. Now we're going to need to pop down a couple of the services. So the only two that we really have to worry about right now are energy and water and I noticed that since the wind is so good down here let's go ahead and pop you there pop this one there now the blue line uh, the blue outline at the bottom that is where power is currently being transferred now whenever you build a building it kind of has a, a small footprint that's larger than the building itself where it will take care of the kind of micro infrastructure so the the power lines hanging from building to building or, or along like street uh street side power poles whereas the, the the city itself and that's us we have to take care of the macro infrastructure so that the large pylons that cover greater distances and we are probably going to expand quite quickly to the point where we're going to need uh, more than the the amount of power that a single turbine will offer us but uh, we're going to bring this in down here now similarly uh, as we build up houses around here they'll create a, a little bit of a wider footprint so even though this pylon doesn't sit on on any of these uh, zoning tiles, the houses here will connect up, or should, I hope, to the energy. And since we have this footprint of energy here, that is going to keep things nice and simple for us. We can place down a uh, water pump there, uh, a water intake, and now we just need to hook you up to the pipe uh, sort of infrastructure we've got down here. Now... Generally speaking, I, well, you really should try to avoid overlapping unnecessarily because these things all cost money. We've got a little bit of overlap there, so let's try and move up just a tad further. Can we not place that there? Space already occupied. Hmm. 
Well, let's try and get down there. Can we do that? No, we cannot. Can we do that? Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay, so that's going to save us a bit of money. You don't really need to be as finicky as, as I was there. Um, to be perfectly honest, you, you can get by without being that accurate to it. But uh, it is worth paying attention to how much money you're spending on, uh, on that as you uh, build pipes. Um, sure, I guess that, that'll work. There we go. So we've covered more or less everything that needs to be covered. We can probably bring this down just a little bit further. Just to make sure that we uh, just get that a little bit there as well. But we're also going to need a sewage outflow. Now, again, you want this downstream. Not the other way around. You don't want the intake downstream. That would result in terrible, terrible things. And possibly uh, lawsuits. So for now, we just want to hook this up to the pipe network over there. Unfortunately, we're also going to have to run energy down there as well, which is a, a bit more of a potch. Uh, we're starting to get fairly low in our funds now, which is a little bit worrisome. But there we go. That will connect you guys up. Now, the way that we're going to have to transfer power across here. Um, as we're not going to have all of our zones in the same sort of area, there is going to be a gap, especially across this little middle section here. It is going to mean that we're going to need to have some additional uh, pylons inside. But that shouldn't be a terrible problem. We're just going to get this little area set up there, and then we're going to have some uh, residential here. Uh, I recommend having some commercial even amongst your residential simply because, well... One, it's like a corner shop, really. Um, but two, um, while you can cluster all your all your commercial in one kind of central hub, and that makes sense if you've got a much larger city serving a much larger population that perhaps lives on the outskirts of the city, it doesn't make as much sense when you're going to have tiny little populations here to, for, to, for us to have like another kind of commercial hub over here and yet another place we're going to have to send out uh, pylons to hook up to, to power. So that should do okay there. Now... Uh, sure, we'll have a little bit there as well. That will allow me to place down the pylon there and run it all the way across to here, hopefully. Let me just eyeball that, get that all nice and in the right place. And we can take that across and then hook up to the industry over here as well. Uh, sure, right. We'll pop down some industry about there. In fact, we'll fill that whole area with industry here. Okay, I think we're about ready to start. We've actually got a little bit more money left, so we're going to be able to do uh, a few things once time starts ticking down. Now, these are going to show up that there's no energy connected, and that's true because we need this place to actually develop first for them to connect all of the power up. Green energy, what an excellent choice. I know, right? Green cities and, and, and using wind turbines. Who'd have thunk it? But there we are. We've actually got some development going on. We do need it to develop over here first. And perhaps I should have kind of uh, guided that by only um, zoning in a few places here and there. But there we go. It's all connected up now. So that power is now transferring down there. We can have a, a look at that. There we are. So it's all going so far. We've got sewage. We've got um, drinking water things are looking up for our citizens. So let's uh, speed up the game a little bit. Now, we are going to be in the red for quite some time, so I'm going to be spending some of my time just zoning in new buildings, trying to get some uh, tax flowing into the city. Right now, we actually quite badly need some industry coming in, which uh, is not happening, which is a little bit of a, uh, a problem for me. Uh, what I would like to do over here as well is... Sure, let's get a little bit more uh, residential zoning going on because it's clear that we've got quite a lot of demand right now so we can definitely afford to do that uh what i would like down here though is to continue on the the streets and i think we're going to make a bit of a larger block there uh something like so running up we hmm, i'd like to not have to ruin that person's house if i can possibly avoid it so let's try and steer clear of doing that then shall we let's uh, speed things up i really would love it if uh, some some industry there we go we've got jobs people you're not going to be unemployed anymore this is such a fantastic day for the city of avakis we're not going to have unemployed people actually most of them do a fairly good job of actually having jobs just out of city so they they will uh, travel a lot more but 
Now, the, the question is, how are they going to make use of this right now? Um, we'll see. We'll see. I've got some plans. I've got some ideas of how we might want to expand this further that will probably result in this eventually becoming one way. Mm, we'll see. We will definitely see. Uh, as we develop further and further back here, it'll make more sense to allow people to rapidly just make their way to the point in the city where they then turn off because that's where they live or that's where their job is or something along those lines. And I've got a bit of an idea. Mm, and it may involve tunnels. Right, okay, so we, uh, you know, we've got a little bit more room. Still need to expand a bit more before we're, we're out of the red. Now, do we have budgetary control? We do, fantastic. Now, one thing we can see here, we've got way more um, capacity for water than we're actually using. So I'm going to drop the bu budget on that quite dramatically. Power, power fluctuates much more, more aggressively. So I'm going to actually leave that one as is. But we can easily drop the water and still have plenty of water to spare, so we're going to leave that as is. Now, the uh, After Dark or um, something, I think that's the After Dark DLC, uh, gives us the uh, day and night cycle. Oh, I forgot we actually set this up, but I hadn't yet set up uh, the water down here. My bad! <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Uh, let's get that one down there. Sorry about pausing as well. I will try to avoid using pause as a crutch, but when I notice that I've made a silly mistake, I, it just automatically triggers. Uh, I will try to wean myself off it. But uh, we are now in the black. Fantastic. We're making money. This is a, a wondrous day. A wondrous day indeed. Uh, how about we do something a little nice with this road down here then as a bit of a celebration. Let's bring that along and from here, I think we're going to bring you... Well, we could actually take that down just a little bit and then bring this up at a 45 degree angle. Can we get you out here at 45? Hmm. Need that to go along a little bit more to give me the proper guidelines, unfortunately. Uh, there we go, 45 is what I want, and no, that's not what I'm going to get, apparently. Uh, no, I cannot get 45. Hmm. Well, dread. Okay. Doesn't really matter too much. I wasn't specifically aiming for 45 anyway, but uh, I just wanted a bit of a, a, a better curve, but okay, we'll, we'll go with this. Right to about there, and we'll draw this out up along here. And... Just for, for nicety's sake, I think what we're going to do here is we'll slow this down just a tad. We're almost uh, at the point where we're going to be able to unlock the uh, next milestones. We're going to draw out a, a little bit of a road. and Actually, I'm going to go into freeform mode so that we can draw this road out. Uh, as if uh, this is a bit of a maintenance road for these structures. Can I not do that? Oh, that's a bit of, a bit of an annoyance. Can I put it there? No, that that is literally as close as we can get. Okay, fair enough. Uh, how about up here instead then? We'll have one just about going over to the the pump there as well, and maybe a little one just coming out there. Marvelous, absolutely marvelous. Now. Uh, I would beautify it a little bit further, maybe even putting in some trees and stuff like that, but I'm fairly certain that having trees around a, uh, uh, a, a wind turbine, uh, not, so, not so clever actually, it doesn't seem to make much sense. Uh, road now have names, click on a name to open the information panel about the road in question. We've actually got quite a lot of overlays now, and this is with one of the previous DLCs, and again this is just uh, for those who watched my previous um, series and might be interested in the things that have changed in the game. We can click on any road and see the, the traffic that's actually using it. Right now they're not using this street at all, this street that I'm paying an awful lot for and that makes me a little bit sad on the inside. But they will eventually, I'm sure, especially if the plan that's slowly forming in my mind about how to uh, use this comes to fruition. In fact, I could possibly just force the matter a little bit. I might do that, even though it's generally the worst possible reason to do something. It's like, yeah, because I, I need this road to make sense, so I'm going to make something else less efficient to validate this road. Don't be that person. Don't be the me that I'm about to be right now. Uh, right, well, I want that to be uh, turn off, and I want this one to be, no, the other way around. Exit. Nope. Other way around. Can't upgrade. There we go. Perfect. 
Now they have to use it. Mwahahaha. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, however, what we're going to do, uh, just, just to make it up to them a little bit, is also give you a little bit more in the way of um, development over here. And since this is five tiles, I'm going to strictly tell them to build only four there. This way, their entry point is not going to be on the larger world. I generally don't want anything um, having the entry exit on that on this street. I'd rather it all be on the on the smaller roads. So let's uh, get those going down here as well. There we are. We'll get a little bit down there too. I mean, I guess I could have things over there, but I am not actually as keen on that idea. Actually, uh, we'll get these down here though. That should be fine. Perfect. We do need a little bit more commercial, though. Okay, well, I think we can uh, sort that out. In fact, actually, before we let this develop, let's uh, pull that back a bit. In fact, let's pull all of that back, all the way down, and we'll have this over here instead. There we go. That can be a little bit of a, a commercial area. Okay, I'm liking what we've got going so far. Let's uh, draw that up to down here as well, and up there. And just get rid of those. There we go. Perfect. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot, actually. Let's uh, speed up time just a tad and let things develop a little bit further. We're actually starting to make good money. And there we go. Little Hamlet. Fantastic. Now, we can adjust taxes. We can adjust loans. Uh, or rather, we can take out a loan. We can also, or rather, we now have to worry about garbage, healthcare, and education which are things that we're going to deal with right away because now that we can do them people are gonna start actually caring that whether they're done or not now generally speaking I don't think uh, heavy industry really cares too much if you happen to have a garbage collection nearby nevertheless I, I would feel a little bit bad about having to uh, force people to endure that uh, so we're gonna build out the garbage collection just a little ways outside the city. Now this is the easiest thing we can do, but the first of the buildings uh, that I believe come with uh, green cities is the recycling center. Normally at this stage you'd be building a landfill site and the way the landfill works is they'll send out garbage trucks, the garbage trucks will collect the garbage, bring it back here and it just sits there until later on when you can develop an incinerator which will actually uh, start incinerating the garbage for quite a hefty amount of pollution but it, it means that the landfill won't just fill up until it's a capacity then you can't take any more garbage however the recycling center costs a lot more citizens can recycle more different kinds of waste when the city has a recycling center making less garbage pile up the center produces a small amount of raw materials from the waste so it'll actually create a resource uh, we don't need any water we do need quite a lot of energy um, and it processes up to 48,000 units of waste a week which is much more than we currently need now we can afford to build this and i would like to uh so we're going to now that uh, that large um sort of um orange area around it uh is the noise pollution and i believe the purple area is um ground pollution i would imagine now we are unfortunately going to need to uh, get a pylon just to uh, link these up so there we go but that should take care of the rubbish which is already starting to stack up next of the items that we unlock let's just have a quick look we unlocked healthcare and education so let's go ahead and get down some healthcare now we've got a couple of different clinics we've also oh actually no we don't have oh modder packs uh, might be some of the DLC that we've got. Uh, right, so medical clinic. I believe that these are just reskins. They, they, they're just um, certain themes. Uh, I might go with this one, actually. That looks a lot more quaint and also a lot closer to the sort of things that, that uh, I'm used to seeing. Uh, now, we can pop this in the middle where they can get out to anywhere. I could put it there. And you'll notice that depending on where I put it, because it's a one-way system, it'll affect the the city in a different way because the ambulances will be able to reach a different point in the city whereas if i put it up here it's going to be able to reach everywhere Ooh, i'm going to have to pause there because i'm noticing that my power is a little bit lower than it should be okay well we're gonna to have to get one of these then uh i'll continue following the the well actually you know what i'll have one right about here 
I think this will still... No, we need it to be producing eight. Eight megawatts, please. Or is all of this... No, no, that should be fine. Eight is there. There we go. Pomp. That'll take care of our power situation. There we are. Hooray for the mayor. More green energy for the city. Indeed, indeed. Uh, but, as I was saying, the the way that we, uh, the um, services work is generally we want them to be kind of central or at least have access, uh, quick access to either side of the city. Now, healthcare... This is one that, that will do either um, uh, industry or, or um, residential. They'll have equal amounts of use, I believe, because people will have accidents at work and need treatment and things like that. But generally speaking, I think that it makes people a little bit happier to have this nearby residential. Um, that being said, though, I've got a slight idea. So let's go ahead and do something... Can we get this right in the middle? Yes, we can. Oh, that's glorious. I like it a lot. We're going to draw this out to about there. And here, we're going to place this. And this will, will have equal access to either side of the city, I believe. It doesn't quite get all the way over there, though. But uh, that's always going to be a bit of a problem. Let's go ahead and pop that one down right there. We are going to need to connect you to some power, though. Uh, which you're not going to have just yet so uh we could i suppose just have uh the electricity lines running alongside but uh i think it makes a little bit more sense just to run it to about here and then cross like that there we go perfect that'll get us a little bit of power over there or oh, it should in just a moment there we are and we've now got healthcare now education generally you only need this where you've actually got people living. So uh, I'm not going to be able to build one just yet, or for, in fact, a little while. It's going to cost me 10,000. How much can I take on a loan? I can get 20,000. I'm going to take it because, again, people are now going to start caring about this sort of thing. So I do need that. Oh, look at all that pollution. Yuck. Uh, right, so where am I going to place this? We've actually got another one as well. A community school. A small and safe community school allows children to get education and grow into educated adults, an alternative to elementary school. Hmm. Uh, it requires 160 water. What's the difference? Uh, oh, that, that requires a lot more. Though this is more expensive to build and to run. Uh, student capacity. It's got a much smaller student capacity as well. Um, but it looks like this was added by... Uh, the expansion. So I'm I'm interested in seeing how it how it all works. Sure. Okay. You you've got me. I'll I'll bite. Let's build this out a little bit there. There we go. And then we're we're gonna pump down a community community school. That'd be lovely. Let's pop that up there. There we are. The new community school has a wide offering of different after school activities and hobbies. Let's actually uh, come out of this and actually have a. Oh, it's a bit dark. Oh, it's got solar solar um, cells on the roof. It's got some rooftop grass. Oh, that's actually lovely. I like it a lot. That looks awesome. That looks a lot better than the uh, regular elementary schools, actually. But you'll notice our RCI meter is through the roof. Now, we are actually hemorrhaging money right now because I've added a load of services and I haven't really done much to uh, increase our income. So I'm going to have to deal with that quickly before uh, it gets out of hand and welcome back okay i've just been uh, rezoning this area a little bit while we waited for some more money to flow into the coffers and we'll just get a little bit more zoning down there as well now i've adjusted the budget fairly aggressively actually because we were running quite low as you may have noticed uh i've increased the taxes because we are providing all of the services that our citizens could hope for at the moment and and so a 12 percent tax rate on everything seems uh, about right honestly you can tweak it a lot better and and really really tailor it to to encourage certain types of industry certain types of of, of businesses into the city over others but right now this is a good kind of area to be at and we are well we're we're massively overproducing water so that's still down garbage um massively overproducing that honestly i can pull that down to about 85 as well because we are growing quite rapidly uh, in terms of power 
You could do with a little bit more, honestly. And finally, healthcare. Still m massively, massive uh, amount of uh, health gain. We, we, we've pulled that down quite a lot. And we have a huge capacity for students. Or rather, we did. Uh, oh, actually, that's based on the budget being so much lower. Let's, uh, let's take that up to 85%, though. Otherwise, we might be in a bit of trouble. Uh, there we go. We could actually adjust the day and the night differently. Um... I will have to have a look into that, whether whether adjusting this to be much lower at night makes sense, because our people in school at night, now night and, and day, as you probably already noticed, the, the cycles actually last for several months of in-game time, so it's, it's quite representative, but uh, we'll have a look at that uh, a little bit later. But we are making quite a lot of money right now, and that is a very, very nice place to be. I must say I am quite pleased. There we go. We'll just get uh, this little area set up back here. And honestly, I think we're, we're actually at a, a fairly good place with our city for the first episode. We've got uh, a budding little industrial area over here. We have uh, a, a quite a, a nice residential area coming together. It would be nice to start developing over on this side now. And I think that's really where we're going to be moving toward. We are very, very close to having a worthy village, which at that point we'll have districts and all sorts of other services that we're going to need to worry about. But yeah, I think we're going to be calling it there for this episode. I do hope you've all enjoyed, though, and are looking forward to the continuation of this series. As ever, I warmly welcome any feedback you might have for me down in the comments below. But until next time, and as ever, do remember to leave a like if you liked. Some of you haven't, and I'll see you in the next episode. But until then, do take care, everyone.